What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And today will be a chest workout mostly, with uh, some triceps to really get them fired up as well. But also at the very end some vacuum exercises, some really good exercises to get the waist smaller for sure. But the main course of this workout will be the chest. Who doesn't want to let the chest grow like an old school bodybuilder always has? A big chest, big arms, just a good V-shape and all that being in proportion. But having a big chest is always, always a good thing. So what you want to do is for chest, don't think too complicated. Stick to the basics, but perform execute the basics uh, to a T, execute them very well. So what we are starting out with is doing the flat dumbbell press. Now you can start out with a flat bench press, but in my opinion, the flat dumbbell press is even slightly better. Yes, you cannot load as much weight as uh, with the bench press, but it's much better for the shoulders. I have to say, the more experience that you are as a bodybuilder or a weightlifter, the more you notice that when the muscle mass increases around the shoulder joint, it's more difficult to keep that shoulder joint healthy. Because a lot of, you know, a lot of tension, a lot of muscle is pulling on those tendons, is pulling on those joints. So it's difficult to keep it healthy. So that's why I always like to train the rear delts as well as much as I train the front delts. Because if you can, if you see here, the front delts are being worked when doing the chest, but a lot less when doing the dumbbell press. Because if you look at the positioning of my hands, they aren't straight. With a barbell, they would be forced straight. With these dumbbells, they can be in an angle, allowing for the perfect motion, the perfect natural motion for the chest to get a full stretch contraction without the shoulder shoulders being forced in an uncomfortable position. As you can see with the weight I also put the pounds there. A lot of people always tell me can you please put the pounds next to the weight so at least at this first exercise where the weights matter the most because then you're the strongest I did put the pounds there. So you can actually see how many pounds the dumbbells are and now they are 60 kilograms each. And uh, I didn't need a spotter right now. Usually, you can see that I drop the dumbbells like that because no one is around, of course. But normally, in a busy gym, control the dumbbells even on the way down. But um, normally, I need a spotter to get the dumbbells up to my chest. But this new bench that I purchased for the gym actually has like uh, an attachment at the front near my feet, as you can see. When I put my feet on there and then the dumbbells on my knees, the distance from the dumbbells to my chest is very short. So it doesn't have to travel, I don't have to put as much force on my shoulders, so it's very easy to use a heavy weight and just fall backwards and just uh, press the weight that way. But this was my final set, my girlfriend there helping me with the last few reps to get the most out of it, but uh, if I would go heavier than this, my form would be lacking. We do have even heavier dumbbells than that, we go up to 70 kilograms, but uh, this was a very nice beginning exercise to start out with. So first we did a regular pressing exercise with the dumbbells and now you might say hey this is a chest press almost the same thing but the difference is that bodybuilding is all about hitting the same muscle from different angles and every single exercise is hitting the muscle from different angles. Here you can purely focus without having to balance anything on the contraction of the chest. In my opinion when doing the dumbbell press you focus more on the stretch of the chest rather than the contraction. And here you can really focus very well on the contraction. Never neglect the stretch though, because the better the stretch, the better the contraction will be. So if, if you can see right here, I am going quite heavy. This chest press from Panetta Sport is a really nice one, uh, plate loaded, but it allows you to go nice and heavy with the smooth motion of this uh, chest press. And the seat I also put high enough so that my hands are actually right at my lower chest allowing me to use the chest fully without uh, impinging the shoulders too much. Here you can see that I'm really uh, controlling the weight going down stretching the chest to the max and then pressing forward until I fully stretch the chest. I mean fully contract the chest. If you don't if you're not able to contract the chest at the end you're simply going too heavy. If you want that quality chest, if you want those striations on those chests, you have to train like this consistently. 
not only focusing on the stretch or a short range of motion, but use a full range of motion and really get every single muscle fiber to fire. Because if you don't, you will never get that full and complete chest that we all do want. Next up, we're doing another press, but again from a different angle. This time it is a free weight exercise again, but a decline bench press. It has actually been proven that comparing the incline bench press to the decline bench press, you might think, well, the decline is for the lower chest and the incline is for the upper chest. However, doing the decline bench press works the upper chest just as much as the incline bench press, ex except we're able to load the weight more, you're able to do more weight because the range of motion is a little bit shorter, but it's also healthier on the shoulders, which is the big benefit of this exercise. And you load the lower chest more. So in my opinion, compared to the incline bench press, this exercise uh, rules supreme. It is supremely superior to the incline bench press, especially when you're more experienced, when you feel shoulder issues. So listen up. If you have shoulder issues, don't do the incline bench press anymore. Stick to the decline bench press. Let the bar drop to your lower chest and really press it from that angle and you will not feel the shoulders anymore. Now that we have a very good pump in the chest, it's time to stretch it out using the cable flies. Now, as you may know, the cable flies is the only way, or flies in general, is the only way to isolate the chest. So here, you don't have another joint except for the shoulder joint working to actually contract and stretch the chest. So when you do a press, the triceps are also working. So here, naturally, you won't be able to do as much weight compared to a pressing movement. If you are doing as much weight, you're simply using the triceps to press the weight as well. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do here, and I uh, took off my shirt to actually execute it properly to show you guys how to execute it properly. What you want to do here is create those striations in the chest. If you're lean enough, you can see this. You have to stretch all the way outwards until you see those striations. That means you have a full stretch. And then you contract the chest like this until you see the striations again. Some people stay in the middle and that's exactly why they may, you know, achieve a big chest because they do get some blood in there. They are able to lift some weight with the chest, but they don't ever etch in those details literally. I know that probably there are no true studies done on this because it's very difficult to find people who have been training for years using one or another method. But in my opinion, training with full range of motion will simply create a better quality muscle. You can see it while doing the exercise. And of course, I'm doing some posing right here. I actually posted this picture on my Instagram uh, to show off my uh, the progress that I've been making. Slow, but steady. You can see when you're working out in the gym, when your pump is getting better and better, when the proportions are getting better and better, you know that you are progressing as a bodybuilder. It's not about the scale, it's not about the weight, but it's about how you look. And in the end, I am a classic physique competitor. What does that mean? That I cannot gain 20 pounds of muscle because then I won't be able to compete in classic physique again. For me, it's about refining my physique. And here you can see the back, the thickness in the middle, the traps have improved. It also has to do with how, to, how you pose. But I like to feel myself like this and I urge you guys to do so as well when the gym isn't busy to actually gauge the progress that you're making. Otherwise, a lot of people are, you know, not really motivated to train as hard because they don't know when they're making progress. So they skip doing the consistent work. They try to do different exercises. But in my opinion, sticking to the basics like this, the body weight dips and all the other exercises will get you the growth and the progress that you need. You just have to find a way to track it. Now, what I like to do at the end of a chest workout is simply body weight dips. Now, my body weight is quite high, around 120 kilos in this video. 
close to 260 pounds that is so I don't need to add any weight especially when you work the chest as much as I did you can only do a couple of reps using the body weight so the first set I was able to do more than 10 and then the second and third set I was only able to do five or six reps so that tells me the chest is finished if you would still be able to do 20 plus reps with these body weight dips you simply did not train hard enough during the chest workout and you can see throughout the workout that when I'm doing exercises I won't be able to do you know I'm, I'm doing less and less weight and that proves to me that I've been training the chest properly because if I still will be able to go very heavy on the decline bench that wouldn't be right and now it's time for the triceps only doing one exercise actually a superset exercise for the triceps here why because I also have a separate tricep day uh, I will be posting a new video of my workout split. It's actually very simple, but I'll be explaining why I'm doing everything, what I'm doing. Uh, I have specific weak points in my physique that I need addressed. So I do the triceps after chest for one basic, but proven exercise that works. And I have a separate tricep day where I do three to four heavy tricep exercises to really work those triceps. So I am doing a superset here as I mentioned, so first the French press, really stretching out those triceps and the French press, what it is, is I'm really, you know, pushing or letting the uh, bar drop down behind my head, stretching the long head to the max, because to be able to stretch the long head to the max, you have to move the shoulder joint as well, it's part of the motion of the tricep, so if you don't do that, you won't be able to stretch that long head to the max. And then at the same time, of course, do the extension with the triceps and then immediately doing a superset with a close grip press. And that targets the medial head of the tricep. So the long head and the medial head, which is both the biggest part of the triceps, are being worked here. Uh, some people like to finish off uh, a chest workout with doing like rope push downs for the triceps, but that's a minor finishing exercise, you know, like a finisher for the triceps, but it's not an actually mass builder. Here I'm able to still do a, quite a lot of weight and at the same time uh, still do the volume needed to really propel those triceps into growth. And because uh, you already work the triceps during chest, you don't have to do a lot of work for them to finish them off for good. But the exercise that you choose to finish them off with has to be, you know, you have to know that it works for you. And the French press combined with a close grip press gets you a heavy weight and a good pump volume at the same time. And what I also wanted you to see is what I like to do for the vacuum exercises uh, normally. Uh, most people who like to train a vacuum do it in the morning like three sets of 15 seconds and that's it of course that's a very nice addition to the vacuum training but you have to be a little more active than that especially when your waist isn't naturally narrow some people are genetically gifted they have a very narrow waist but for some of us we have to consciously train it to stay narrow while the rest of our body grows so when you do squats, for example, or any heavy exercises that you have to brace your core, the thing you're doing is you're pushing out the transverse abdominus, which, what is the transverse abdominus? It is the layer of muscle beneath the abs, which you can see, you can see a six pack, that's the rectus abdominus, but the transverse abdominus is beneath the six pack, and that is what causes your stomach to pull in, but also it allows it to, to actually push outwards when you're doing squats. You can really, if you uh, wear a weightlifting belt, you can push it against the belt, and that's the transverse abdominus so it has two functions however because bodybuilders like to eat a lot like to do a lot of those exercises and we like to wear a weightlifting belt so they are not really consciously uh, contracting the transverse abdominus it is weakened for most people and the only way to strengthen it and to allow the natural weightlifting belt of your body that transverse abdominus muscle to actually get stronger is by training it under various angles and various exercises so not only holding it which is what i did at the beginning for 30 shallow breaths so first breathe out all the air 
pull in your stomach, pull in the belly button towards your spine and then breathe as shallow as possible to actually uh, keep the stomach inwards. And then I like to do the scooping leg raises unilateral that I, that I did before for uh, 20 or 25 reps on each side. And now I'm doing the most difficult version putting two of my legs up and then using one knee like a knee raise while keeping the stomach pulled in this transfer of dominance active you want to feel it burn if you don't feel it burn you're not pulling it deep far enough and then i like to do the vacuum hold on the side for 30 shallow breaths again first this side and then the other side to really make sure that it hit all angles in total, this will take about 10 minutes, and I like to do this after every single workout. And this ensures that my waist stays small and actually is already decreasing in size, pulling the abs closer together. I haven't been doing this for very long now. I have been doing the traditional vacuum work until now, but adding this active vacuum work will make a difference in your workouts. I will do a separate video about this, where I got this idea from, and it's not from the bodybuilding world. Anyway, guys, I really want to thank you for watching this video. Check out the website VintageGenetics.com to find all old school classic workout clothing. I want to thank you for watching, and don't forget to stay golden.